Hey gang, it's me, Dr. Steve. And you know, we got a bombshell revelation coming from James O'Keefe and his O'Keefe Media Group, the OMG. Yeah, you may have heard about this, but they exposed how IBM CEO Arvind Krishna has been openly incentivizing his employees to deliberately hire only non-white and non-Asian applicants, which of course means that they were financially incentivized to racially discriminate. I kid you not. I mean, despite the fact, you know, the Supreme Court's recent unequivocal decision striking down discriminatory practices and workplace hiring and school admissions, nevertheless, the wokesters in corporate America are continuing to implement discriminatory diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives. Now, the good news is that we're already seeing former Trump advisor Stephen Miller's America First legal team. They're getting involved with this, uh, and they're uh, pushing back against IBM big time. But I got to tell you, I think the real good news is that patriots like you aren't waiting around for our corporate elite to fix their ways. As we detail every week on this channel, a thriving parallel economy dedicated to faith, family, and freedom is in full swing. We've seen the success of mass boycotts, as well as boycotts, as well as major new marketplaces developing to appeal to and connect conservatives all over the nation. I'm joined today by my good friend and New York Times bestselling author Chris Widener, who has recently teamed up with the one and only Dinesh D'Souza to start the Red Referral Network to counter the woke DEI nonsense that we've seen pollute so much of corporate America. Now, you can check out the Red Referral Network by clicking on the link below. You're going to absolutely love it. It's an amazing parallel economy resource. So, Chris, welcome, my friend. Great to see you again. It's been way too long. Great to see you. I, I always loved uh, the memories of you and I hanging out at some events together, and uh, it's great to see you again. And appreciate you having me on. Absolutely, Chris. Yeah, it's and I do. I miss I miss our get-togethers. They were awesome all over the country. It was so yeah. cool. Yeah, it was fun. So, what do you think's going on here? I mean, this I dude, this is IBM. This isn't you know, this isn't some peripheral company. This is the CEO of IBM pushing the wokest of woke nonsense and then financially incentivizing employees to comply with these discriminatory policies. I mean, what do you see is going on here? I, I think there's two things. One, it's just racism. And I think, you know, I think a lot of conservatives, we are naive because we are good people. And we tend to think, we tend to think, well, I wouldn't lie to anybody. So nobody would lie to me. Who lies? Yeah. Nobody lies. These people are doing it on purpose because they hate white people. They view white people as, you know, colonialists and and racist and, you know, all these kinds of things. They they look at white history and they find the negative things, but they don't look at other history. I mean, you know, Chinese killed 60 million people of their own, you know, their own people. Uh, slavery yeah. happened all across Africa, you know, but I think in some ways it's just pure blatant racism. But the other thing, Dr. Steve, I think that's interesting, and I've done a little bit of digging on this, is people say, oh, it's corporations that are driving this. It's BlackRock and you know some of those groups. But somebody said, no, it's actually one step deeper than that. BlackRock isn't doing it because they think it should be done. What's happening is, let's take California, for example. How many hundreds of billions of dollars sit in funds like the teachers unions, the state employees unions, and those things get invested with BlackRock? Mm -hmm. It's not BlackRock just going, you know, what we should do. We should start a thing called DEI. It's the politicians who say, you're going to do this or we're going to pull $400 billion out of your funds. So here's what we want you to do. And that actually makes sense to me, that it's being driven by those with a political uh, agenda. And right. so I think that's really what's happening. And of course, IBM would be one of the first ones that you start with. And then you merge the fact that he's a, a person of color who obviously doesn't like white people or Asian people, uh, because they're also included in that. Um, so that combined with this sort of dictate from their puppet masters, and it all kind of actually makes sense. Yeah, it is interesting, you know, because uh, to I would totally fortify, I, I'd steel men what you just said, because back in the day, you know, 19th, 20th centuries, the wealthy, you know, the Rockefellers, the Vanderbilts, what did they spend their money on? 
They spent their money on beautifying culture, right? We had extraordinary church building boom in the in the 19th and early 20th centuries. And we're talking gorgeous stone cathedrals. You know, we had music conservatories built like the one built by George Peabody in Baltimore in the 1860s. We have we had art galleries, all kinds of noble cultural projects yeah, vanderbilt built a thousand libraries for it, americans it, 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 they they and it, because they loved western civilization <laughs> they saw themselves as part of this gift of western civilization today's wealthy today's rich look at what they're doing they're like a bunch of woke activists that waste their money on radical left-wing politics which ironically only ends up destroying our culture uh, it, it but, they, but they're they're sort of inoculated from that because of their wealth. Right. Um, and and right. you know, I'll tell you what. I have a friend of mine. I haven't probably talked to him for a few years now, but um, he is very very uh, well known. At least the the magazine that he owns is very very well known. And uh, he it's one of the most famous magazines in America. And I don't want to out him, but he is personally very conservative but he's very liberal in public. And I got to know him over the course of a few years and we were on the phone one time and I said, I think I finally figured you out. And he goes, what, what are you talking about? I said, no, 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 I figured it out. You're conservative, you live your life conservatively, but you're a liberal publicly. I figured it out. And he goes, what? And I go, you don't wanna be uninvited from the cocktail parties. Right, right. And, and he agreed with me. He kind of chuckled and was, well, there's a lot of truth to that. So his friendship relationships drive what he says publicly, even though he he lives his life conservatively. Right. You know, it's 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 kind of interesting how that pressure can come on somebody and force them to be somebody that they're not in order to, to gain acceptance. Yeah, it's stunning. And it, and it, it, I think you're absolutely right. It is a very sort of it is an anti-Western civilization uh dynamic uh that's behind it probably because it's pushed by globalism and and globalist dynamics just seem to be so yeah they seem to be so adverse to any uh any counter any option to globalism um like oh, and, and i read the other day i read the other day i need to check it out so this is just something i read i need to confirm it but for the first time ever over half the forbes 400 members received their money via inheritance as opposed to actually earning it wow. and i think it's really interesting when people inherit the money and i've known a lot of wealthy uh, uh people who've inherited their money and they feel a little guilty yeah there's a yeah. lot of of yeah. white guilt a lot of liberal uh wealthy guilt. Um, I had a friend who came from a very wealthy family in Seattle and, you know, he was always promoting, Oh, you can take care of this group and that group and the other group. And I said, yeah, it's easy for you to say you live behind a gate, you get in your car, your gate opens, you go to a private garage, you get out of your private garage and go up an elevator straight to your office. You don't ever have to see any of these folks, but you want to take my money and give it to them. He goes, right. oh, yeah, there's a lot of truth to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah there, there's, there certainly is. Absolutely. Yeah. Gag, if you're just joining us, I'm talking with Chris Widener of Red Referral Network. He's teamed up with Dinesh D'Souza. Check them out. They're amazing. Click on the link below. It's an incredible parallel economy resource. Uh, Chris, is there any, I mean, are you familiar? I mean, in light of the Supreme Court decision some months back, overturning affirmative action as inherently discriminatory, discriminatory. I, I, I'm curious if you know if there's been any accountability here with these corporations. It just seems like, you know, what we're seeing with IBM and elsewhere, it's a, it's a kind of almost contempt of court. You know, is there is there any mechanism for holding these guys accountable? Sure. You sue them. And then they go, OK. And they, who, how much is the fine? Who do we make the check out to? Yeah, OK. Right. And, and so to them, it's a win win. We do it as long until we get caught. And then we just write a check out of our overflowing coffers. Right. And if you remember, remember, I, I can't remember what it was. It might have been the um, canceling the the um, the student debt. I can't remember what it was. But Biden actually said out loud, yeah, my constitutional friends, they're telling me that it's going to get overturned. But in the meantime, we're going to do it. Yeah. yeah. And, and, we'll, and we'll win an election in the meantime. Yeah. 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 That's what they do. We'll just yeah. we'll just do it. If we get caught, we get caught. You know, it's what I say about what's going on with Trump right now is uh, we're going to prosecute him. We're going to throw everything at him. And if we can convict him on something, we win. 
If we right. can't, we get him on the news every night, sitting there, giving mug shots, sitting in court, telling everybody he's been indicted 91 times. Right. It's win-win for them to be bad people. Right. Wow. Yeah. Uh, well, obviously, uh, Americans are fed up with this uh, garbage. Uh, we've noticed this parallel economy uh, growing. Um, what are you saying? So you're on the front lines of this now with uh, Dinesh. Dinesh has obviously himself been uh, on the front lines of advocating for a parallel economy for a long time now. Uh, how have you noticed? What do you? What kind of trends are you noticing with regard to? Uh, the current state of a, the building of a parallel economy. Well, and I will say there's really two people that really opened my eyes to the, the parallel economy, Dinesh, obviously, and you. And, and all the speeches that I heard you give and those kinds of things really opened my eyes up. And when we started the Red Referral Network, which is basically, for those of you who are listening, you've probably heard of BNI, Business Networking International, local groups that meet together and they share referrals. That's what the Red Referral Network is. And uh, it's BNI for conservatives. And then Dinesh creates the content for the groups and stuff like that. I don't know that it would have worked seven years ago. Right. Uh, because yeah, before Trump you know, ran for office and the left went apoplectic over it. Uh, and then they decided the only way to win is to just destroy him, destroy anybody that follows him, lie, cheat, steal, wage all sorts of warfare, lawfare, anything we can. And when they started calling us racist, homophobic, sexist, transphobic, insurrectionists, now people are like, I'm sick of giving my money over there. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it ourselves. And so you know, typically Starbucks does something. We go, I'm never drinking Starbucks again. But then they go drink it from a local coffee shop where the woman makes $3,000 a year off of you and she donates a thousand of it to the Biden reelect campaign. Right, right. And, right. and so what we're trying to do is to make people think it's not just the big companies. You know, if you add up all the money given to politicians and political organizations by individuals and small businesses, it is over eight times more than the large packs and the large businesses. Wow. Because there's tens of millions, 50 million, 75 million individuals and small businesses that donate to the left, as opposed to, you know, Amazon throwing $50 million in a pot right. or, or whatever. So we're trying to say, don't just think about it in terms of the big grand scale. Think about the small scale and all the people that you're giving your money to because you haven't really thought about it. And this is where local networks kick in, isn't it? It's, it's, yeah. It's, yeah I, so I've been to your site. Tell people that when they click on the link below and they check out Red Referral Network, what what right away they're asked to to yeah to they give us their name and their zip code. Yeah. That yep. or not name, email and zip code. That puts you into our system. You're now registered with it. It's totally free. We've got lots of great things. In fact, we have a one month free uh, Epic Times thing at the very end. Once oh, you nice. fill out the, the questionnaire, we've got about a 90 second questionnaire. Tell you, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, but it's free to join the network. And then we have the local groups that we're that we're building out. We're spending a lot of money on the website because we it's all going to be driven by zip code. And so if somebody says, I want to start a, a red referral network group in my hometown, we've had over 250 people already say, I want to start a group. That's the biggest need we have right now is people who say, I can lead a group. I can host a group. Uh, and really, it's more like facilitating. We do all the training and that kind of thing. If they check off that they want to be a leader, we've got put them into a separate list. We give them all the training. We have live training. We have continued training and support for them. But let's say that uh, I, I want to start a group here in the town where I live, uh, zip code 37363. And I, I say, OK, I'm going to be a leader. I'm starting a group. Um, and I decide to meet it, you know a local coffee shop. We actually have a conservative woman who owns a local coffee shop and I put it up there. We're meeting at Wired Coffee and and uh, it's going to be 7 a.m. on Tuesday mornings. Now, when somebody else comes in and I don't know who they are, but they come in through Dinesh or through you or through whoever they might have heard it about and they type in 37363, two things will happen. They will be notified that there's already a group in their zip code and the leader of the group will be notified that someone is looking for a group in their zip code. And so we're dry, we're letting the technology drive people together so that they can connect with one another so they can start doing business together. You know, if, if I'm going to put $30,000 into a new roof, I'd rather give it to somebody who shares my values Absolutely. than somebody who's going to take 3,000 of it and give it to the Biden reelect campaign. 
so that he can stand in the public square and say, you know, Steve Turley and Chris Widener are horrible, rotten people. (laughs) That's right. right. They'd say Steve, not Chris Widener. You're you're, you're, you're too good. But what I, you know, when I, when I first came across the Red Referral Network and looked at it, it reminded me, I was, I was interviewing uh, Colonel Doug McGregor. You've probably seen him. Oh yeah. I love him. He's great. Yeah, he was really neat because he said he thought the number one thing we need right now, the number one thing we need is mass organization. Of course, you know, I, 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 the lieutenant colonel is going to say that, but a ma- mass organization. He said, you go, you know, you see all these big get togethers that that uh, patriots have all over the country, but you'll notice there are no tables there to take down their names and get them registered to vote and so forth. We got to get organized. We got, I love red referral network precisely because it seems like it is the it is a perfect form of organizing the patriot business community across the nation well yeah and if you think about it we we could build a group of 50 people and only one of them ever you know signed up to lead the group he signs up to lead the group and then he goes out to four of his friends said hey let's let's do this group they now join it they go tell four of their friends now they've got 16 plus uh, the two they've now got 18 and all of a sudden it it slowly goes out and nobody knows it's happening and right. a year from now our goal is to have 500,000 free registered members and then 100,000 uh, 75 to 100,000 in local groups. And, and I love how you're, 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 you get it because you get these kinds of things, right? Now what happens after the 2024 election, or maybe we need poll watchers and we go, hey, we need poll watchers in uh, Maricopa County and Fulton County up in, in Milwaukee County. We need some poll watchers. Who wants to go up and volunteer for the local party up there? And now we have a group of people that we can, or we have uh, great candidates. We've got great candidates all over the country who are running for for office we can bring them onto a webinar and say this person needs your support and you get seventy five thousand people to all throw five dollars in the pot yeah boom and now you can compete against anybody who's getting funded by soros and the like exactly yeah Yeah. don't underestimate the little guy when they band together you know there's an old proverb that i love one can put a thousand to flight two can put ten thousand to flight it's exponential it's it's multiplication not addition when we get together Right, right. Yeah. Compound as it were. Yeah. It's wonderful. Gang, this is absolutely amazing resource. Red Referral Network. Just click on the link below, learn more. It's exactly what we need. We need to build out our own business infrastructure that supports an economy dedicated to faith, family, and freedom. And that is exactly what Red Referral Network is doing. So click on that link below, get involved. And let's build, forget building a parallel economy. Let's build a parallel civilization. Let's do it, guys. It's going to be amazing. Chris, you're amazing. Uh, let's have you back soon. And I, I cannot wait till you hit that 100,000 goal. I think, it's, I think it's going to be sooner than you could even imagine. Thank you. I appreciate it. You bet.